Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? Why would they remake Cabin Fever? That movie came out in 2003. My friend Tony uh, asked if I could do a review of Cabin Fever. And he sent me a link if I was interested. I said, okay. I checked it out. And I was like, well, first of all, I was like, they're making a remake of it? Why? I mean, because I know there was two sequels. Cabin Fever 2, which I saw, and then there's Cabin Fever Patient Zero on Netflix. I haven't seen that one yet. I do plan on seeing that, but... I mean, this one, I remember seeing the original. I had the original on DVD. Uh, I think it was when they were selling them for five bucks. You know, cause I, it, it was a while before I bought it. But I did buy the DVD, and... Uh, I enjoyed the movie. It was a great horror comedy gore fest. This one is pretty much... First of all, it's pointless to remake it. It's stupid remaking it. As, But pretty much, this one is pretty much the same thing except nowhere near as good. Not that much comedy. Everybody's kind of an asshole on it. I don't care about anyone in the film. And uh, if you're seeing it, you pretty much know it's about the, the kids that get like this, this real nasty, yucky disease. They end up falling apart and their skin falls off and all this yucky, nasty stuff happens. So you already know that. So, I mean, if they're going to do a remake... But well, they shouldn't do it anyways. Why not try to make something different? Like, establish it within the first 20 minutes, right? So, I mean, there's these, and then have it like a big, like a big, like they get infected really quick, like in 28 days later. You know, you get bitten, you're like 15, 10, 15 seconds later, you start getting yucky and nasty. I mean, but they turn to zombies and that one. But this one, like, you know, 15 minutes, and then you start falling apart, and turn that. And then take the rest of the movie and turn it into a balls out horror comedic gore fest, action gore fest, comedic, like uh, Reanime, when Reanime really got going, you know, that classic movie. Do something like that. Do something different. I mean, it says Eli Roth presents, and Eli Roth has uh, a hand in making a movie. He didn't direct it. Travis Z did it. I, I was going to say tra Travis Allen or Travis Lynch from Trav Tries. It's not him, though. Uh, but, boy. Do something different. I mean, not every remake sucks. Like, the remake of uh, I Spit on Your Grave was really good. Because they did some different stuff. And then she really got some really nasty revenge on the guys that did it wrong. That was really good. I like that. And then the two sequels were, were decent. You know what I mean? But not super great. But, I mean, this one is like, oh, my God. It's just pointless. It's pretty much the same movie. Except not as good. And then, you know, if... There, uh, if someone asks you, pretty much what's going to happen if someone asks, you know, is the new is the remake of Cabin Fever any good? And they say, uh, you're much further off seeing the original. Just like, why the hell would they bother remaking uh, Psycho? And Psycho was like a frame for frame remake back in '97 or something like that, and that was really lousy. And see the original. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's no point in seeing the remake of Cabin Fever. It sucks. I mean. The acting is solid. The acting's not bad, even though there's no you don't really sympathize with anyone. And it looks like they had decent money into it. And there's some bore toward the end, but not enough for my need, my taste. I mean, I it didn't really start getting going, get going until like the last 20 minutes. Then let you off the hook. And they even go uh, ahead and do this thing where the girl's shaving her leg that's infected. And I remember in the original, I was like, ah like a little bit of screen and then this one they kind of doing it and they kind of let you off the hook and then the way they did it they did it really badly and it, it's just a terrible movie I mean the most I could ever give this is two and a half out of ten it's like see the original I mean that's why I don't understand why Hollywood's remaking so many movies and a lot of the remakes really suck especially uh, Nightmare on Elm Street oh that was awful and then like the Friday 13th remake and Paramount had no business putting their name on it. It was Paramount as a slash co-production between, co between Paramount and New Line Cinema. Because New Line Cinema took it over after the abomination of which part 8. Jay's Take Manhattan. That movie sucked. And then, you know, it was d done for a little while. And then uh, New Line Cinema brought it back with uh, Jason Goes to Hell Final Friday or something like that. In 93. And then it was dormant for a little while. Then Jason X came, which I liked real well. And Freddy vs. Jason. Then they did that god-awful remake. And I mean, because Paramount 
Back when Friday the 13th came out, Paramount was embarrassed with the, with the series. They, they were embarrassed that uh, it was successful and stuff like that. I guess Joe Joseph Zito, I remember seeing a documentary, he was really excited to pitch the idea for, uh, he was set to direct part four of the final chapter, which of course wasn't the final chapter. And he went in there and it seemed like the producers and stuff like that to speak to the to speak to Paramount, to the studio execs and stuff like that, and they, they didn't barely want to, they kind of like brush them aside because they were embarrassed with the, uh, the series. They were embarrassed it was on the run, and I mean that's why Paramount had no business putting their name on that remake, even though the remake sucked. It humanized Jason, not Jason Callum, it humanized Jason Voorhees too much, and it was just I don't know, it just didn't work. Um, They should have invested just doing another Freddy vs. Jason or something like that. But, I mean, they ruined uh, they ruined uh, uh, Friday the 13th. They ruined uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And then, uh, of course, they ruined Halloween. Even though I think that had a little more promise to it. I mean, compared to the remakes of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th, Halloween had the most promise. Even though, I mean, I think it killed the series. Well, part of the first one was pretty good. And then the second one... It wasn't that good. I mean, it just was like a parody of the series. You know, it's still better than a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, which was disastrous. Um, I think they're planning on doing another sequel to Hell. It might be good. I don't know. I think there were... I know uh, New Image was planning on doing Leatherface, another t- Chainsaw Massacre, but that's, that series is kind of lost anyways. It was really weird what they did. At least Toby Hooper did something different with Tex Chainsaw 2, the second one back in... What, 80s, 485 or something like that. At least he did something different. Uh, they could have done something different with this and made it a sequel. But, I mean, if they wanted it, they, they could have made it real balls out, real gory for like an hour or so like that. I mean, really things getting really crazy and out of hand. They had the money to do it, you know. And like I said, Eli Roth is no dummy. I don't know why he signed off on doing a remake of a movie he only made like 13 years ago. That's stupid. Now, I know, like, there's foreign films, and then they make an American remake of it, which is a little bit different. Because um, I had, like, that Strangers, the French film, and then they did a remake with Liv Tyler. And they, those movies were both different. At least that was something different. Uh, but, I don't know. I'm really disappointed with uh, Cabin Fever. I mean, I should just bother not watching it. Tony said it was only okay, but kind of a pointless waste of time. It was watchable, but... I couldn't imagine anyone liking this over the original. Uh, <coughs> burp alert. But I mean, it's just, a, it's just a shame. It's a two and a half out of ten. Really, real shameful. So there you have my review of, uh, well, more of my rant is, why did they bother to remake Cabin Fever? A movie made 13 years ago. It's fucking stupid. So, until next time, bye, please. Take care of my legion. I mean, it got going... During the last 20 minutes, and there was a scene that was really good. I I had some, I actually cared a little bit, and then it, it then it just kind of screwed up and and there's not much humor. And I will say that uh, they did a nod at the beginning to uh, they did like little references to uh, Last House on Left in the original when it said the road needs to nowhere. If you've seen the original Wes Craven movie, I like that. They didn't do it on this one, and this one they started. They had like something like The Shining. With the music and they showed the car going. I thought that was neat at the very beginning. But I mean. It just didn't have much to it. I mean Eli Roth is so smart. I don't know why he signed off to do something this lame. He could have made it a real gore fest. He should have. There's some gore in this. But. I don't know. Just not enough. And they really screwed up that razor blade sequence. Uh, when the girl shaved her legs too. The, in the original it was really good. But in this one. Eh. Oh, well, I've ran it long enough about why they bothered to remake uh, Cabin Fever, a movie that was made tw- uh, 13 years ago, back in 2003. So until next time, bye, please. Take care of my legion.